Hey everybody, welcome to Sama, another edition in this interesting time that we're in. My name is Derek Mazzoni. Thank you so much for being here. Tonight I have um, um, some pretty amazing friends who have decided to grace our digital airwaves. Uh, the band's name is Niaz, and um, I've been a fan for a long time. Uh, in many ways, they were one of the first bands to really bring forth a, uh, a Persian, South Asian sound with a um, uh, with electronics and other, and other sensibilities and really got quite successful with it beyond just a dance floor, beyond a particular niche or um, or, or just uh, a European audience. They actually uh, they became they had a, a global audience pretty quickly. Um, they were on six degrees records. They toured literally all over the world. And for a long time, as soon as you said Niaz, people knew who they were and uh, really fell in love with them. And it was a particular kind of music that really took you to uh, uh, another place. A lot of people that I knew that were talking about the band were really speaking about, like, I listen to them and I'm completely uh, uh, taken away. Someplace really beautiful and wonderful. Uh, the the new, Niaz's music is made up of uh, the voice of Iranian-born, Indian-raced Azam Ali. Uh, she is a two-time nominee uh, for the prestigious Canadian Juno Award. And also, uh, you can hear her um, her voice on a series of uh, television shows and movies. And the um, her partner, and Niaz, um, is a Logan. And um, uh, the thing that's interesting about Logan and and uh, and um, and Azam is that they are creating a sound which is both um, of the times that we're in, but really goes back to a powerful uh, Iranian. Uh, uh, what's the word for it? Um, when you hear the music, you're taken into a whole other space. Uh, the composer and instrumentalist is Loga Torkian, and this is, in many ways, um, the sound of the 21st century um, as we would like for it to be. Um, it's been a very, very complicated time, and uh, and we've learned a lot from each other since we've been um, on Sama, and I've been waiting for this ensemble to come together um, since the beginning. Hello, Niaz. Hello, Loga. Hi there. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Nice to see you. It's good nice to see I can't you help too. but say your name in the traditional way. It is. It's Derek. I've, it's I've, been, Derek. I've, been, I've been anglified. It's so if you, very If true. you can roll yeah. the R, why, why not? <laughs> Let's take a drink to that. Let's drink. Uh, take a yes. drink to the old country. Uh, let's take a drink to the new country all at the same <laughs> time. It's interesting because uh, everybody in, in, um, in Sama under COVID, when you and I first met, we've known each other for a while. When I first, when you and I first met, um, uh, it was a different time. You know, things were about to get kind of crazy. You guys were literally in my last session at KEXP. That's right. I was waiting for that session to come out. And I was like, okay. It was a different time. We could actually hug each other. Everything has changed. <laughs> and I remember, if you don't remember, I remember talking to you about like the power that this music has to bridge boundaries, to bridge um, cultures. We talked about performing in Tehran. We talked about, we were talking about this from a political perspective. We weren't really talking about it from a cultural, or social perspective. And one of the reasons I wanted to kind of like preface this conversation in my intro of you it's beyond like you know electronic music and persian beats it's going to make you move it's going to make you love it really now is more about like there is a, a legacy with this music the, there's a reason why this this music has survived for so long is that it opens up people's hearts it opens up people's souls and and you know the whether it's the persian poetry or it's the musical styles or it is the art there's something about it which is incredibly evocative and I didn't get it until COVID hit. I didn't get it until I started playing this music in my sets and presenting it and talking about it, that it really resonated with people, but it just felt like it, it could really help them through this difficult time. And, um, you know, I was kind of like thinking about this, not talking about it so much, but I did want to talk about it with you because this is an ancient music. These are ancient words. There's a reason why they've survived. There's a reason why they've even prospered and changed throughout the times. And here you are presenting it. Can you speak to that a little bit, if you can? Loga, Azam. Well, I go even a little bit more, uh, kind of more abstract. I think in societies uh, that are secular, really the m music and art become uh, 
the forefront of leading the humanity. I think uh, this is where we have to turn in order to be able to find some sort of a, a comfort, guidance, and kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. And really, the music of, uh, of the East in general is all uh, still very much based in mysticism and kind of a spiritual spirituality of the region. So naturally, it kind of resonates and talks to it. This, uh, a specific part of our psyche mm -hmm. and that allows us to find that comfort and that assurance that you know what our our, our struggle has not changed throughout time despite of all of our uh, all of our progress in terms of technology and all that still our human quest is very much the same and that lay, 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 line of continuity shows itself in you know in our art and in the way it's expressed so we we kind of relate to it it's okay. time okay okay wow okay so <laughs> no 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry we're 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 streaming and i'm trying mean, like you know if I, if we were actually next to each other my gesture wouldn't be so gigantic it would be like, okay, <laughs> i want you to go on i don't want you to stop <laughs> um this is the reality i just had my uh uh parent teachers conference with my um uh, with my fifth grader and it was fascinating it was like the same situation you're trying to talk to this teacher and the teacher's like what it's like what that's it's it's complicated <laughs> um uh, so please go on because this is this is just the beginning of of this and i wanted to also speak to osama about this where it's like it it's one thing to know that there is such a history of mysticism to such a history of uh of um Tapping into other arts, you know, what, what is mysticism? We could go into a whole conversation about that, but it's tapping something that gives you something back. It's it's an energy, it's a different kind of, some call it medicine, you know, in shamanic cultures, some would be getting, you know, closer to God or to the spirits or you know, whatever, however you want to call it. I'm not an expert, obviously, but it's one thing to know that. It's another thing to create art that presents that to the population, and that's different. And that was a different thing with you guys. Um, when Niaz first started, I'm, I'm aging myself, but I first met you through uh, one of your founding members, which is Carmen Rizzo. We were both DJing, we're out there. And I was like, listening to this, I was like, okay, this is really interesting because it fits in this space. It fits in, you know, I've been to your shows, people dance, sometimes they don't. So it fits in that environment. Um, but you guys just go just like sample something and put it into a mix and, and then it's off to another thing. You're actually doing the work, singing these songs and going like that. So, Tell me about being like the messenger, like taking this, knowing it, and then putting out his art. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's a, uh, you know, the way the way I look at the role of an artist is we really are the ultimate culture, the ultimate cultural diplomats, and in, in many way, you know, it it's a big responsibility that you don't realize you're going to have to bear upon your shoulders until suddenly you become more successful than you imagined you would. I would just say that when we started Niaz, I, I was personally going through an existential crisis. And um, it was more through my own crisis that I started to revisit a lot of the ancient poetry, the ancient folk songs, not just from Iran, but from the regions around Iran that I was very much um, curious about and um, fascinated with. So it's really became a process of self-discovery. It keeps changing. The journey of Niaz keeps changing for me. And the reason I believe that it resonates with people so deeply all over the world, regardless of their cultural or religious backgrounds, I think the reason it resonates so deeply is because it was about an existential crisis that transcends religion and borders and flags and, and all of that. It really is about carving deep into the human soul and experience. So it became about that initially that we wanted to kind of bring to life these elements of a culture that we were completely now severed from but we felt so out of place and transplanted in this Western society, in this capitalist, within a capitalist model that just we, we were misfits, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So a lot of it just became about how do we reconcile these two aspects of, of ourselves, of coming from such a beautiful legacy, a beautiful land, and at the same time, wanting to embrace where we are and be part of the world that we now are in. So, so it really was, was so much about that. And then we thought actually a lot of Iranians, our fellow Iranians would, would initially resonate with the work, but that did not happen. Initially, it was an international audience. It was audiences that had no idea what we were singing, what I was singing about, what where this was coming from. And then the Iranians sort of came very late in the game. I, I want to say years and years later. We had a few Iranian fans in the beginning, but they were a lot like us. They were they were globalists. They were they had a much more worldly view, and mm -hmm. they embraced other cultures already. It was not a sort of Iranian because it's also not Iranian centric music. It's not we're not nationalists no, no. in that way. So, so it uh, they that they came a little bit earlier uh, later on, and then when when I just saw the more spiritual impact that the music was having, it that was very powerful for me because I you know we started receiving messages, really profound stuff that you know just it alters who you are, changes who you are, and then you realize w w what a responsibility you have. Got it. Okay. So I don't know if I've addressed the that no, no, no. aspect you, of the <laughs> existential. You does, you does. No, you don't, because it is, it's still the personal, and then it becomes broader, because an, if an artist is attaching, a, attaching something to their personal um, of who they are, whether it's a crisis or something, it's not art, it's just... Um, it's something else. I don't know what it is. But well, it's a biography, go, right? It's an it's a yeah, sort of existential yeah. biography of your yeah. life. Even if it's folk songs. And that was the thing that I was like, you know, in doing Sama now since March, I'm discovering a lot. It's been a learning experience. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> um, and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot um, about, and this is really interesting because when I, I wasn't expecting to do this, I wasn't expecting to talk to you right now. You've seen me in other situations. You know, we have a studio, we get multi cameras. It's entertaining. It's open. You know, we get to have a limited conversation, but it does become a bigger, you know, at the time we thought the next year was going to be just like the year before. Surprise, we were wrong in that assumption of what our life was going to be. Now it feels like, what are we reaching for? What are, what are the things that are helping? What are the things that are, um, uh, we're learning about ourselves as artists, we're learning about ourselves as people. And I'm always curious with artists that aren't just out there like, you know, rock, 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 or whatever. It's great, no, no judgment, but you know, ego-driven uh, music. Uh, I'm just not, I'm curious to see what these artists are actually doing in that space right now where you've got such a wellspring. And on that point, let's get to our first song right now. So on this platform that I'm using uh, right now, I have, a I have a small space for the title of the song. So help me out here. This is Gekti. 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 Um, yes. Tell me about the song. Well, this song came... Um from Sinan Jem Erolu, who is in the who's performing with us. He's now a permanent member of the band. Oh, cool. Yes. He is he this has, a first? He has received the knighthood. <laughs> he's been, he's been niazed. Um, he has been niazed. Uh, yes. Actually, he is the first person since we created Niaz that we made a full member because we've we've just been writing so much together and he has contributed tremendously to okay. just the the sonic direction that we've been going moving towards so it just seems like a natural it it seems like a very natural move to to make him a permanent member so he actually comes from a kurdish and alevi background even though he's the most secular guy you will ever meet Mm -hmm. And um, so he has this whole, and, and this, this is where my love of Turkish music really lies, is, is within the Alevi music, Alevi Bektashi tradition. And they are sort of the Sufis of Turkey, I want to say, but they are a, a, a minority. They have been very much oppressed over the years. And um, a lot of their practices were held in secret for for many many years and even till today they are not yeah. completely embraced so sinan had 
that that's kind of how we formed our connection is this love for Alevi music. And then we were introduced through a mutual friend and it was just the love at first hearing him, love at first sight. It was just, it was like, it was a match made in heaven. So he brought this song and we still have to release it. We It's never been uh, officially released. So we thought it would be nice to perform it for you. Okay. And we've been including it in the multimedia show. So um, that's where it comes from. And it's basically the song is about, it's it translates as the caravan, the caravan of friends has passed. Perfect. So, okay. like most songs, it's very sad. <laughs> of course. Okay, here we go.
That's beautiful. I was dancing in my chair. <laughs> I know. It really, really, really makes me miss seeing you guys live <laughs> in settings. You know what I'm talking about? That and, guy, yeah. Sinan, he's just so... I mean, I... I made I, me miss him. I, lis I listen to him so much, and every single time, this guy just... Is, he's some, he's unbelievable. He's one of the most incredible musicians I've ever met in my life. I have to pinch myself sometimes on stage when, when I when I'm listening to him and thinking I'm I'm on stage with him. Like he, we're making yeah. something. What's together, your relationship you know? like with your audience? Because you're bringing something pretty powerful there. And I've been to your shows, and I know that people are moved. They're touched by it. You know, you've got you guys have been able to have an international audience, which is rare. Uh, for people, you guys have traveled all over the world. You've been to all through Central Asia. I know that you were there was a whole thing. You were uh, you were quite vocal with your displeasure with Borat and Kazakhstan and the reaction <laughs> yeah. there. So, you know, most people go like people, people can't, can't find Kazakhstan, you know, on a map. It's like that's a real country, really. It's like yes, it's an ancient country. It's real, with real, real people, but but it's culture, but you've yeah. been there. You've been there. Like so, you're right. able to reach these people. And I keep going back to my initial question: is like. You know, it's, that's a powerful gift to where you can transcend borders. You know, this is um, music. You know, when you brought about secular and I was like, yeah, you guys must deal with religious questions sometimes because you fall within that specter. You know, most of the time musicians don't. It's like either you're making church music or you're not. You guys kind of like, you know, I could see somebody who's quote unquote devout or even fundamentalist. Like, what are you doing here uh, with this stuff? It's a curious place. I've had artists on Sama. We're like, I can't really tell you where I am because uh, this is haram. People really, you know, not doing that. You're, you're a woman. You're singing, you know, certain parts of the, the culture, um, shall we say, of this music that you're bringing out doesn't really want to see you on stage. So you're, you're, you're carrying a load, you know. It's like the cultural, the political, and now there's COVID on top of this. And I'm super curious how everybody's dealing, but also the things that you're offering. Am I on base here or am I just completely off? You are uh, so on base. It's, it's, um, I'm, and I'm not surprised because that's why we are, we are friends. Um, I think what you're really talking about is when art, um, you know, art, art can become a form of resistance without you even having to sing a single political word, mm -hmm. you know? And I think f for me, art has, I am sort of, an embodiment of resistance in that sense. And that resistance has morphed over the years. Initially, as an Iranian woman, for me to go and tell my mother I want to be a singer and performer is the equivalent of if I said I would like to be a prostitute. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's in our culture that this is not a life goal. Mm -hmm. So my first resistance was breaking the gender role and the gender norms within the confines of my own culture. And then the resistance became about something completely different, which is that I can be a secular person and I'm not, I don't belong to any religious group, even though I was born into a Baha'i and Muslim family. Um, and Loga comes from Baha'i, Jewish and uh, Muslim background. But um, I had never adhered to any one particular religion, but my music is deeply rooted in philosophy and, and mysticism. So my second resistance became that, yes, I can not belong to a particular group, but still explore these ideas and influence others around me. So that keeps changing. And then it once we became very famous in Turkey, I remember the first time we realized there were there were two incidents when we went to Istanbul where I realized nothing was ever going to be the same again. Is we went one year, it was right after the first album came out, and we were walking in Taksim Square, the biggest um, yeah. street, and we started he hearing this music, and and I said to Loga, "Is that my voice?" And we heard. The hunt was blasting all through Taksim Square, and we just stood there and cried for a few minutes, could not believe that this was happening. And then we got off the metro one day. Was Carmen with us that yes. day? I think Carmen was with us when I took that picture. It's a really amazing photograph. We got off this train, 
and it's a very very busy intersection where ships come and and trains come and buses come and we got off and right in front of us was this massive billboard and it was Carmen Logan and me on this billboard and we just stood there just our our jaws dropped and we thought this is happening this is really happening you know yeah. so to have become to have gained that kind of popularity in the middle east was was something also that i didn't expect and and what was interesting is that the way the turkish audience embraced me particularly as a woman is that they saw this woman that was wholesome in in their eyes that i still kind of fit within the sort of moral and ethical um fabric of of what their society is erected upon uh -huh. but at the same time i was defying it in my own way yeah yeah so it was it was something really powerful that was happening over there and i still to this day get so many i've had so many turkish young girls 15 16 year olds in high school do you know contact me to do papers and do their thesis in college or something on me and i think this is something very remarkable of of how you can still um transcend certain certain boundaries while at the same time um not not completely losing your footing and and your roots so this is something very remarkable that happened i have an incredibly close relationship with my fan base I mean, they are a lot of them have become very close friends of mine. Not not a lot, but those who have have become very close with me, and um, I I do my best to reply to every single comment. I I until very recently I used to come out after every single show. I would meet. I would not go home. These I used to drive the band crazy because they wanted to go, and I would not leave until I had hugged. Not yet. It. No, I would ha have to meet every single person. I must touch hug every single hand. person, sign every CD. I just feel like I know, I know, I know. That's beautiful. That's part people, of our, people invest. Invested. You know, people invest so much in yeah. you, and you mean yeah. something to them. You go yeah, into yeah. their souls, and 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 you know, giving them ten seconds, fifteen seconds of your yeah. time they'll to remember, tell them that they'll, they're, they'll, that their experience is real yeah. that something real has happened it's uh, it's you cannot um, you completely, cannot completely measure agreed. that you know and and when that happens internationally because you know it's like um it's taking time out of their day and they they love you so much that they want to see you and you're actually able to carry that journey on you're able to you know touch people literally all over the world let's go to another song let's go to this to this track also which i love quite a bit tell me about this song which one tom, tom. tom ishq Tamesh. Are you gonna say Tamesh? A taste oh, yeah, of love. Tamesh, because we are you're gonna have another the multimedia as well. Okay. Tamesh me literally translates as a taste of love. And do you want to talk about it this since no, I talked so no. much? Go ahead. Okay, so it's based um so the album, The Fourth Light, was based on for those who are not familiar and are watching this for the first time. Um it's based and as the on, on the poetry and philosophy of Rabi al Basri, who was an eighth century mystic and poet. And in my humble opinion, she's the first feminist that we know of that exists in the world. That I, I don't know anyone who comes prior to her. And feminist in the sense that she broke gender norms and gender roles and mm -hmm. um and formed her own identity. She is also she's a mist. She was a mystic, and she's credited with creating the concept of divine love, which lies at the heart of what is modern day Sufi mysticism. And she never received any credit for for this uh, philosophy of hers. It was uh, later on, you know, Rumi and some famous other Attar. poets like Attar, who came after her, have attributed also some of their poetry to her and the philosophy but unfortunately she was left out of our history books so we brought her to life in this project and there are very few uh, poems of hers that survived over time this is based on a short couplet that did survive and then uh, loga took it and sort of expanded upon that so the idea basically is that you you love for the sake of love itself and not out of the promise of heaven or the fear of hell. So what she was doing was wanting to dismantle this idea of duality 
and um, the idea that you worship out of a sense of duty, that it should be that that a spiritual journey is one that really occurs within yourself. So this song sort of explores uh, that theme through her few words. Perfect. Okay, there we go.
Niaz on Sama, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. Thank you so much. That was beautiful, as always. Thank, thank, you. thank you. You guys. It's so we were just talking while we were listening to that. That you're, Do you know this is the first interview and performance we've done since COVID for anyone? Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it for you to say thank you. I just, it, it, we it's just, just strange. you know, for a lot of artists, it became a time of, of sort of a, a lot of p artists became incredibly desperate and yeah. just started performing every day going live. And, and we became the opposite. I just completely became introverted. And I felt like the universe, it was a time for the universe just saying to each of us, go within, you know, that's yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on yeah. a pause. Everything is on a pause. Well, it's so, a, it's a, it's a learning. It, you know, there's um, there's a, we're in a transition time. This is one of those accelerants, you know, shall we say? I don't know. There's probably a term for it, but like you know, when after the we're in a plague. That's right. right. After a plague, you know, during a plague, people stop doing shit. They're like, oh my god, it's a plague. Um, yeah. And then you get a renaissance. Yes. You know, so that's amazing. Um, I'm not going anywhere, obviously. I saw a picture on my computer and it's I like, saw it. I saw what you posted. It was one? beautiful. Yes, yeah. it was beautiful because that's so, exactly it captured what I've been saying all along is yeah. that there has to be some kind of renaissance after this. Yeah, this can't absolutely. be the be all and end no. all. Because no, 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 I no, do. No. I am one of those people that I do believe in the benevolence of the universe. Yeah. You know, I believe so, too. And I think mm -hmm. I think I think you're you're in this space it's you're not getting anything back so it's really difficult for artists especially the kind of artists such as yourself where you're you're doing a lot of work you know you're going out there in a dive bar and going like, i'm gonna tell you sing a song about my girlfriend or my boyfriend or like <laughs> i'm mad i'm fucking mad uh, which is great i feel that um but you're bringing a lot you have a multimedia show there's like there's messaging there's visuals there's there's that's a multimedia show um but there's a lot going on there you know it's like you guys come in and the uh, it's not just plug and play there's there's a lot going on there and to suddenly go from that to this yes yeah. that's a lot to, to think about and so we have to think about like what does that mean now in this knowing that this is here we know exactly when we're going to go back and most of the time you don't go back you know what i mean there's no like walking back into it let's get big normal again what are you talking about we're going forward. You know, it's like, I think yes. Winston Churchill said, when you find yourself, uh, when you walk into hell, you keep walking or something like that. It's, it's Monday. It's not a good day for me to remember everything. But it's an interesting time for, for artists to to kind of like, okay, what am I going to do here with this? What, what, what can I bring to my audience and to myself? Because we are taking care of ourselves, obviously, hopefully. And then where does that go? Um, what does... What does Niaz look like? And uh, also individual projects, because Loga, you just released um, a new record. I was listening to it earlier today. It's um, a Brink of Absolute, yes? That's right. Okay, that came out. So you guys are doing work. And I think that's the most important part, whether it's like I'm taking all the stuff that I've done before and I'm putting it out, that's working, or I'm doing this, or I'm like exploring other things. But I think we're all in this really interesting, like, trying to figure it out phase right now you know things are moving in the weirdest time in the weirdest place like i just heard that little nasa hip-hop star has just seen 32 million times on this game that my daughter plays uh roblox wow. and it's like and those are funny numbers you say 32 million people watched him for an hour i don't think so they you know they they saw him for a month but still 32 million people because that's how many people are on the game and so it becomes like this really interesting moment in time where you're like what exactly are we talking about here how does this go where do we learn from from it um and where you know i don't expect you to answer right now obviously but it just you know with artists such as yourself where it becomes this it's a it's you breathe you breathe deep when you watch a Nias show you know it's like it's like okay i'm having a moment here i'm going to go on a journey you guys have been on journeys and you take people on a journey what's the journey now you know what i mean yeah i mean i i can tell you that for me the best part of this uh COVID, if there is anything that is to be learned from it is that uh we really realize that we are in a stage of globalization and there is no way back i think that's that's the first thing to learn from it 
uh, you know, it's so easy to see all these footages about Amazon being burned down and all these things are happening, but it's yeah. always on the screen. It's always far away. And now it's reversed. We are on the screen and what has happened somewhere mm -hmm. else so far away, it's right in our life. Yeah. So yeah. I think that juxtaposition, it tells us is a testament that, you know, it's, it's really, we are a different time now and that is being marked. It's scarred. Yeah. And and I think as an as an artist, if you know you are a mirror of your society, and so when when you are forced and you are in a position that you have to go in, inevitably you if you really want to be true to yourself, your music also becomes introspective. You write stuff that it is more reflective that you have to go within, and. For Niaz, yes, we continuously expanded. We were kind of even having uh, going, uh, having outreach programs. We would show at the university, like, you know, University of Washington, where you are in Seattle. And, you know, we would have a yeah. one week of residency prior to the show, meet with students, talk, interact. All that is gone for the yeah. time. Actually, for the time. For until 2022, it's realistically, it's all gone. It's not just us. Is also the question of all the stage product you know, production and the, the stage manager. They're all gone. And how is that going to come back together is not so much about me as an individual artist. The, oh, this is what I need to do. It's a collective quest. It's yeah. a, it falls upon the shoulder of the entire society because it's not just commerciality. It's not about, oh, I need to make some money. I need to keep it. Yeah, of course to make a living too but it becomes a bigger question it becomes a question of how are we gonna now look at ours that is not the same as it was before COVID-19 it's not a, just me trying to find a new way it's the society that has to find a new way yeah no it's completely true completely true it is it is this time where where we're we're talking about it. We're talking about society finding a new way. But, you know, it's like we're living in this history. And I need to close on this because I have another session coming up. But it's like we're living in history. We don't know how it's going to end. So, yeah. you know, we're lucky enough. Anything that's happened in the past, we kind of know. We know what happened. You know, it's like, oh, that's what. But we're in this right now. We don't know what next year. We don't know what the next six months. And we have to absorb what we've been through. But as artists, create the next body of work. And I'm super curious to see what you guys are going to be able to do in that uh, space. But can we say a shout out to Carmen? Because I yep. watched the interview you did with Carmen and I got so emotional. That was so, it was really wonderful kind of going back to the journey, to the beginning of it. And I just really want to make sure that um, his name is mentioned. Carmen. As, par as part Carmen of this. Lindo. Hi, Carmen. Yeah. Yeah, um, because definitely. because it all was born, you know, with the three of us. So um, yeah, I want to be sure that we say that. We'll yeah. do. We'll do. I want to do this again. I want to do this live with you uh, where people can actually ask questions and become part of that. And maybe we could do something like this with Carmen, you guys and me talking about all that. Let's let's explore that because this is pre-recorded. And then it will be broadcast on Friday. But when we're doing it live, it becomes a different kind of energy, different kind of interest. And I wasn't expecting to do live stuff. But now I'm like, it feels like it needs to be live. So let's talk about that a bit more. I have to go. I'm going to play the outro. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much Derek. for having us, Doc.